<laughs> Dude, never did it. Hi, welcome back to Never Did It. It's 1980 on the podcast. I'm Brad Garoon and I'm here with Jake Ziegler. I know that this uh, intro is different every week, but that's how this goes. Hi, Jake. Hello. Happy to be here. Good. Are you excited to talk about 1980? I am excited to talk about 1980, actually. I think there's uh, I think there's plenty to discuss in the, the two movies that we chose. Very cool. So last week we started with the movie that I chose for you. Why don't we this week start with the movie that you chose for me? That would be The Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers. Yes, I chose The Blues Brothers. It's a bit of a, I don't know if I could call it a cult classic at, at this point anymore because it's re, you know it's pretty widely popular, I think, uh, especially amongst a certain group of people that saw it when their younger years, um, which is, I know, when I was first introduced to it as, as a teenager. And it's uh, and it's got a lot of great music in it. You know, there's a lot of good cameos in it. You know, you got Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles. Cab Calloway, Carrie Fisher, James, James Brown. Yeah, I mean, it's got all these these great cameos in it. And it's just, uh, I, I've always thought of it as a really fun movie. And, uh, you know, it was, when I was looking through and I noticed you hadn't seen it, it seemed like one that, uh, that that everyone should check out at least once. Yeah, so I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm a fan of everyone in this movie. Dan Aykroyd was a huge part of my childhood. We've got one of his movies coming up soon, or hopefully soon. Trading Places is one of my favorite movies of all time, favorite comedies of all time. And not just because of Eddie Murphy. Dan Aykroyd's also great in it. I just watched, we talked about this a couple weeks ago on the show, but uh, I think Coneheads is a very underrated movie. It's also a Saturday Night Live movie. This, Blues Brothers, is the first Saturday Night Live movie. I think there have been 11 of them or 12. Blues Brothers were the first in 1980. They didn't make another one until 1992 with Wayne's World. Oh, wow. And then in the 90s, they made at least one every year for a yeah. decade. Then they slowed down post-2000 and have not made one since MacGruber in 2010. Oh, wow. There are just, I guess, not memorable characters on that show anymore. I can't think of one that should that needed its own movie. Right. I guess like Stefan could have been one. Bill Hader's character, Stefan. Mm. Is there anything? And Bill Hader's not on SNL anymore and is doing other things. So is there yeah. anything else? I don't He's know. He's doing just fine without SNL. Yeah. It would be Will Forte would be the kind of guy who would do another one, but he's been off the show for a long time. I think there's a MacGruber TV show now that's supposed to be pretty good, actually. Oh, yeah? But I haven't watched it. Anyway, I love Wayne's World. I love Coneheads. I didn't like this. I felt like there was pretty much no narrative to this movie. It was very loose. And people are going to get on me for this. I also don't like the movie Nashville, which reminded me a lot of this in that it was very much a love letter to the musical genre that is in the title. Well, Nashville, it's a country movie. And this is a blues. Well, it's like a blues and jazz movie. And soul. Blues, jazz, soul. And you're right. The music is great. And the middle of the movie, where it's a musical, is a lot of fun. Mm. The beginning of the movie has the one joke I laughed at. Belushi is getting out of prison. And they won't let him come up to the counter to retrieve his things. But he has to sign his release. So he leans over like very far behind this line to sign it. That's a great visual gag. And I did not laugh again the rest of the movie. And I wanted to because I was ready. Oh, that's really funny. I was ready to laugh more. And I just didn't. But the James Brown scene in the church is funny. Not funny. Fun. The Ray Charles bit is good. The Aretha Franklin bit is fantastic. Oh, she's so great. And undeniably one of the greatest singers of all time. The scene of her singing, uh, singing Think in the diner is just such a blast. And the first time that there's, a, you know, like a, a musical style moment where music breaks out in a place where it shouldn't. And I was just kind of hoping for a lot more of that. But the only scenes that I found myself engaged in were that scene and the scene where they have to play country music and everyone hates them. Oh, yeah, they do Rawhide. Yeah, Rawhide. Yeah. I thought those two scenes were pretty entertaining and, like, got into these fish out of water. And they're fish out of water no matter where they go because they're not people. Like, everything just rolls off of them. But then, like, there was the weird Carrie Fisher stuff where she's trying to kill <laughs> John Belushi. And I, I could see why people thought it was funny. I just didn't. And I didn't like that John Candy's character was nothing. I wanted him to do more. That's true of a lot of movies that, that have him in a small part. He could always do more. I mean, who doesn't love John Candy? Yeah, he's terrific. I just, I recently watched this Tom Hanks movie. I can't remember what it's called. And John Candy's very funny in it, but it is like a nothing movie. It's called Volunteers. Oh, I'm familiar with the title, but I've never seen it. Yeah, it's not worth it. I gave it two stars, but John Candy's very funny in it. And John Candy is funny in like the three seconds he's in this movie, but that's it. (laughs) Orange Whip? I don't know. I just kind of didn't get it. Like, I just didn't, I didn't get it. And it kind of reminded me of Nashville, which I also didn't get because I'm, I'm not into country music. So I... 
Didn't even get much out of the music in that one. And it kind of reminded me of The Jerk, which is a movie I think also doesn't age well. It's just like a lot of weird, and then the bits go on for too long, uh, like SNL. It's just not my kind of humor. I didn't like, I didn't see when I was a kid, so I had no nostalgia for it. Didn't do it for me. Gave it two and a half stars. Tell me more about why you like it. I, I want to know why people like it. Yeah, and again, I haven't seen it in in, in a very long time, but uh, certainly all the music that we've talked about, that was a big reason. I mean, I, I think I still have the soundtrack CD uh, I don't know, my, my CD collections over on the other side of the room, but like I've listened to the soundtrack a lot. Uh, my dad had the, they had an album before the movie, even a couple years before the movie even came out, they had an album called Briefcase Full of Blues. Well, I think they toured. Yeah, I think they did. Um, and they're legit. I mean, they're playing the instruments and they're doing, you know, doing the singing and stuff. And I was always, I was always really into that. So I liked the music part of it a lot. I kind of like just the silly ridiculous nature like when they're driving the police car through the shopping mall and the eight billion police car pile up and everything it's it's super silly and really ridiculous so all that stuff hits a little different for me now post charlottesville i'm i know that this is like before all that and i know that like they don't mean any harm but i was watching that and i was like i am uncomfortable watching them drive through this mall the police car pile up was funny yeah actually everything that happened with the nazis was funny too (laughs) <laughs> but and also watching Nazis get driven off the road for once was was good. And the guy who played the oh weirdly enough, the dude who played the Nazi is also the dude from Nashville. Wouldn't have put that together. Henry Gibson is okay, is right. the Nazi in Blues Brothers, and he is basically like the de facto mayor, or maybe even the mayor in Nashville. Or he's at the very least like the head. He's head of something, yeah. And he's great in both. But yeah, just didn't didn't do it for me. And I haven't seen it probably since before Charlottesville and all that, so I never, you know, reacted to any of it that way. And that's just my memory. But the strongest memory I have of it, like I said, is just the music in it. I, that's what dominates my memory of it. And I love, like I said, I love the Aretha Franklin part, and I love all those things. And I love when they do raw the performance of Rawhide, I think is hilarious. And, and that, I, I'll give you that. I really like that part. Yeah. And then even at the end, when they're doing their, they do, you know, Soul Man and all these other songs. Like, I love those songs. I still love those songs. And kind of where it takes up space in my memory is, is like that. And it was just one that we watched. Like, my sister loved it. My brother watched it. I loved it. You know, we kind of watched it together. It's just, yeah, I got a lot of warm fuzzies uh, memory wise for that one. I know you don't have a rating for this on Letterboxd because you watched it so long ago but what would you give it just based on your memory based on my memory probably four so certainly i even i I do even remember feeling like okay this movie's a little long i feel like it was like two hours and 20 minutes i think it's two hours and five minutes or something like that where it definitely could have been more like an hour 45 i always remember thinking it was a, a, a little bit long but uh yeah, I think I think I'd probably have it as a four. Speaking of musical comedies <laughs> from 1980, I made you watch Popeye. You sure did. <laughs> also, speaking of musicals directed by Robert Altman. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, I, I think I said this to you already, but for I'm a you know pretty self professed film geek, and you know I've studied film. I took a lot of film classes and all that. I've only seen like I think now with this one, I've seen four Robert Altman <laughs> movies, which is uh, I'm almost embarrassed to admit that out loud. Um, it's only weird sounding because. Even when he wasn't like making Hollywood movies, he was making a lot of crappy movies. Like this guy, this dude was seriously prolific, just churning stuff out. Popeye seems to have been something he wanted to do, mm-hmm. and he did a bad job. Yeah, it's kind of a it's a tough watch. Kind of there was like um, there was one line that that where I laughed out loud actually, and it was uh, it was after they have the baby or they find the baby or whatever, and they're they're out in the lake. They're like. You know, rope. You know, doing in a rowboat or whatever. And they're talking about you know what to name the baby because olive oil doesn't want to name it sweet pea. And uh, when Robin Williams says, you know, oh, what are we gonna call it? Baby oil. You know, because that's <laughs> olive oil's last name. Like, okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> I laughed at that really hard. But that was probably the only time I actually laughed without the subtitles. I probably wouldn't have even understood Robin Williams at all. Right. That would have been challenging. And it's just, uh, it's 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 just a movie that feels like it's just a lot of pieces kind of thrown together. Pretty pretty slapdash a little hap little haphazard right so i don't think i need to go over the plot we didn't go over the plot of blues brothers there they, they were orphans and then uh, and the nun who ran their orphanage needs money so they try to get money and they they pretty much there's a weird steven spielberg cameo at the end where he collects the money yeah. from them in the in the government <laughs> building and then they get arrested at the end so it's a it's a it's a weird weird movie um this movie doesn't really have a plot either uh popeye comes to town he's looking for his dad his long lost dad meanwhile the town which is filmed in a beautiful, weird-looking place in Malta, a city in Malta. And I guess all of the, that whole set, like that whole thing, it, you can go visit it still. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, we were in – my fiancé and I were in Italy over the summer, and we thought about going. 
Uh, but it's like a kind of a pain in the ass because it's a different country. I was like, ah, it's Popeye. It's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's there looking for his dad. Meanwhile, the town is run by a secretive villain named the Commodore. And the Commodore's enforcer is Bluto. And it's just an excuse to get all the characters from the comic into the movie. Like, I couldn't figure out the reason why Olive Oil would have been with Bluto in the first place, because they're, like, together. Oh, together. she sang a whole song about it. You don't remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually wrote, in my review of this movie on Letterboxd, this was music that was written to be forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only song I can remember, and it's terrible. It is awful. She is deliberately singing badly. Oh, my God. I was like, this is going on. This is a five-minute song. It will not end. And that's not uh, He Needs Me. No, He Needs Me is about Popeye later on. It's, it's he's big and he's strong and he's mine. That's right. Oh, yeah. Again, I watched this like a week ago and already that's just kind of, that's kind of gone already. It's bad. That song is bad. This movie is bad. So it turns out that the Commodore, spoiler alert for a 40-year-old movie. It turns out that the Commodore is Popeye's dad. He knows where some gold is or something, some treasure. I, I honestly can't remember. And then they go to get it and then Bluto turns on them. And it's all the Popeyes against all the Sailor Men against Bluto. And that scene's kind of cool looking. They do some like interesting special effects in the final fight scene, but screw this movie. It's bad. Yeah, they're like they're fighting an octopus at the end or something. It's just it's it's it, it's tough to get through. This was the first indication that Robin Williams couldn't do just anything because yeah. <laughs> but like he already had the Popeye impression, so they put him in the muscle suit and that was that. Uh not not his best turn. Although I mean he does fine. The movie is badly written, so he does yeah, okay. Not really his fault, right? Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's his right. fault. Or... And, you know, I think this might have been filmed after The Shining, and I think Shelley Duvall might still have been processing the trauma of of dealing with Stanley Kubrick on The Shining, and I don't know, maybe that affected her future performances for a while. This was filmed, it came out before, didn't it? It came out in 80, they both came out in the same oh. year. Hot take, I don't like Shelley Duvall in anything. Yeah, I think this is the only two movies I can recall actually seeing her in, is The Shining and and Popeye. She's also in Nashville. Oh, duh. She plays the hippie girl. She's also in Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme, which was a movie that was very important to me as a kid. Yeah. (laughs) Um... Yeah, I've just never been a fan. I, I I don't like The Shining as much as other people. I like it, but I don't I'm not obsessed with it like other people are. It's far from my favorite Kubrick. Um same, yeah. And the, though she does look genuinely terrified in that movie because of the reason you mentioned because she was tortured by the director, I just didn't like her in it. And I didn't like her in this. I didn't like anyone in this really. But who is there to like? Yeah, I mean there's just there's they, they sing some songs and then they walk around and sing another song and Yeah, it's weird. It's very strange. <laughs> I would, it's not even so good it's bad. I mean, so bad it's good. That's the problem, too. Like, there's nothing to make fun of. It's just boring. And yeah, the songs are bad and they go on for too long, like the He Needs Me song. I don't know where I'd heard that before, but as soon as she started singing that, I'm like, I've definitely heard this and I, could, I couldn't think of where. So I don't remember that song at all. Is that, is she singing about the baby? No, she's singing about, I think she's singing about Popeye. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have any memory of that. Or maybe a Sweet Pea. Honestly, I can't. I can't remember <laughs> already. And the, if I remember right, the baby just shows up, right? It just like shows yeah. up on the doorstep. Yep. You know what's a good analog to this movie? Have you ever seen um, Toys? A long time ago. Well, probably when it, like, when it first came out. That's another one where like stuff sort of just happens for a while and then the movie's over. Yeah. I think there's like, a big war scene. At the, it's the same. It's like there's a big action set piece at the end and Robin Williams does some stuff and sings a song. He sings a song that I was sure forever growing up was a Talking Heads song, but nope, it was just a song for this movie. Oh, weird. weird. Um, Done in the style of Talking Heads. Anyway, we're, this is not a podcast about toys. This is a podcast yeah. <laughs> about Popeye and we can stop. Yeah. So if you want to watch a good movie from 1980, I would recommend The Shining. If you want to watch mm-hmm. some, I can't recommend either of these movies. I gave Popeye one and a half stars. I gave it two and a half, but at this point, I'm not even sure why. Like, I, I feel like it should be lower, you know? <laughs> so sometimes I feel like with Letterbox, I want to rate stuff right away, but sometimes it might be beneficial to wait like a day or two uh, and, yep. and, and see where it sits uh, sits in the old memory hole before I assign a star rating to it. That's a good idea. You know what happened to me recently on Letterboxd? I'm such a, I'm such a Jake now. My four <laughs> star reviews tied my three and a half star reviews. Oh, really? Yep. I like things too much now. And I, I give a lot of four stars out. Like, I'm fairly generous with my star ratings. Oh, uh, thank you, Lord Jake. Yeah, yeah yours, yours are far above. You you have, like, way more four stars than three and a half. Yep, four. Yeah, I've got yeah, it's 979 four stars and 816 three and a half. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, but you've also seen way more half star movies. I don't, I don't give anything a half star. I, I refuse to watch stuff that might be a half star. 
Wow, I've given 90. Yeah, that's quite a lot. But that's, you know, a couple of reasons for that. You know, it'd be like stuff like that I watched in high school. Um, you know, the, like my friends were like, this is going to be really cool. Like the water boy and stuff like that, which is just, just painful uh, to get through. And then, you know, there were certain things that I used to watch. Uh, I used to be able to watch movies at one of the places I worked at. I'm not going to say where, but I would usually watch just like bad movies. So it's just stuff I didn't have to pay attention to or, you know, any recent Adam Sandler movies. Like I can't give it more than half a star. I just can't. Um, speaking of movies you hate, I just watched the cl- trailer for Clerks 3. Oh, I hated Clerks 2. I thought Clerks 2 was hot garbage. So I then went back and watched the trailer for Clerks 2 because I was like confused with myself. I watched the trailer for Clerks 3 and I was like, this does not look that bad. So I went back and watched the trailer for Clerks 2 and I'm like, this looks as bad as it was. There's a chance Clerks yeah. 3 might not be as bad as the rest of these movies. That's bold. That's that's bold because I can't even watch the first one anymore. The first one is just so up its own ass 90s. Yeah. This just looks like a movie. I don't know. First off, Kevin Smith is like, it seems like he's become a different kind of dude. You know, he's had a lot of health issues and... In terms, of, this is this movie is about a guy who has a heart attack and wants to make a movie about his life. I don't know. I think it might not be. Ta- I'm gonna watch it. I, w- I had no plan on watching it. I haven't watched the new Jane Silent Bob, and I won't. Yeah, I'm gonna watch Clerks Three. Report back because yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not sold on it. Yeah, I, nor would I guess you would be. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know. Well, that was it for 1980. We'll be back with another year. We haven't decided which one yet. Thanks for never diddling with us.